Recording is on. Hello there, fellow ship owners, and welcome to this Lunch and Learn session. If there is a book that you just have to have on your nightstand as a ship owner or maritime player in the industry, it definitely is Surface Treated Composites White Book. This white book by Bout van Rompuy, who is the owner of Subsea Industries, talks about or talks right about a proven non-toxic cost-effective alternative technology for underwater ship hull protection and biofouling control. In one word, EcoSpeed. It's a coating you apply to your vessel with which you can save up to, well, my time told me 25%, but if I read this correctly, 40 or 80% of emissions in some cases. And Martijn is working at Subsea Industries and he will tell us all about this wondrous coating. Martijn, take it away. Yes, thank you, Vincent. I will uh, share my screen. Let's see. Can you see the presentation? I can still see the, the screens. So the presentation is, I think, on the other, other screen. I can see myself now. There we go. Perfect. Oh. Okay. Yeah, perfect. All right. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Vincent, for this uh, nice introduction. So I'm Martijn van Ruyten and I work for uh, Subsea Industries. And um, to give a short introduction, Subsea Industries has the goal uh, to reach clean river seas and oceans. And uh, we as a company do that by um, gaining expertise in water. And this expertise in water has led to um, a hull coating technology that is sustainable and uh, which guarantee permanent protection and can reach optimal performance. And I would like to um, explain more about this topic to you today. Uh, and to start off with a coating, it is important to know the goal of a coating. On the first place, uh, it's important for a coating to protect the hull of your vessel. And on the other hand, um, ship owners and shipping uh, companies want optimal performance or that it is um, that you can reach top speeds especially for fast sailing vessels such as yachts and uh, navies but also for um, shipping companies to reduce their fuel consumption however there are some uh, problems with the current coating systems available but in order to uh, elaborate on that, uh, on those uh, problems, we first need to investigate how the current coating systems work. So here you see a vessel sailing, for example, on the ocean. And as you can see, the hull of this uh, vessel is painted with a red coating. This coating consists of different layers. And on top, there is a toxic cover around this paint. And this toxic co cover um, consists out of different um, toxic uh, chemicals that is actually designed to be released into the water. And this is designed in such a way to uh, prevent biofouling to attach to these hulls. Um, and this is um, done in that way to uh, reach an optimal performance. Because of course, if you have biofouling, so marine growth accumulating on your uh, hull, your performance is going to reduce. However, there are some main uh, problems that are uh, playing a role in the shipping industry right now. And one of them is the biofilm. So uh, even when they are using a toxic cover around their um, hull to prevent this biofilm, we see in practice that there is still biofilm uh, accumulating uh, over these hulls. And in that way, the performance is not optimal and um, there are, uh, the fuel consumption is increasing. Another big problem is the hull coating degradation. And this is a process of the coating that degradates over time. And uh, this happens due to uh, several reasons. The first one is that uh, these are soft coatings and therefore very easily damaged. 
Uh, next to that, if you have damage, you need uh, spot repairs or uh, reapplication of the entire coating, which causes that you apply layer over layer, which increases the roughness of your vessel as well. Next to that, uh, corrosion and cavitation uh, damage plays a role. So after a while, your underlying steel or uh, aluminium got uh, damaged by this uh, corrosion. And next to that, as I explained in the previous slides, the coating is designed in such a way that it releases the compounds into the water. So that means that the process of degradation got accelerated by the design of the coating because it's designed in such a way that it should uh, kill the marine uh, organisms that try to attach to these hulls. And because these degradations uh, take place, uh, the ship owner or shipping company has obligation to uh, recoat their entire hull every couple of years, which is of course a very costly, um, costly maintenance every time the ship goes to dry dock. Last but not least, the toxicity. So as I explained, there are toxic chemicals involved in these coatings that are released into the water. And this also has a huge negative impact on our environment. So when we focus on the biofouling impact, you can see here a graph that is released by the IMO in 2021. And in the x-axis, you see the biofouling condition of, um, of different types of biofouling. In the y-axis, you can see the increase in greenhouse gas emissions. And as you can see on the left part, there's a um, area or a phase of light slime, so a thin layer of slime. And as you can see, uh, as, as you can see, this can uh, induce a increase in greenhouse gas emissions by 10 to 20 percent. For more heavy slime, uh, there is an increase in greenhouse gas emissions between 30 and 35 percent. And for hard uh, firing, such as wheat, barnacles, uh, mussels, or even tube worms, you can see that the increase in greenhouse gas emissions reaches up to 45 percent. And the IMO stated that if you are able to keep your ship's hull free from just a thin layer of slime, that you can reduce a ship's greenhouse gas emissions by up to 25%. So a lot of vessels are sailing nowadays uh, with these toxic coatings, but the biofouling still has a chance to uh, attach to the ship's hull. So that means that there are a lot of vessels who are sailing with a, a layer of um, biofouling and actually that they're um, having an excessive greenhouse gas emission of their own vessel, of, of their own uh, fleet. Next to that, we have the whole coating degradation impact. So here you can see a, um, a figure or a graph uh, in the x-axis, you see the age of the ship in years. And in the y-axis, you can see the whole roughness in micron on the left-hand side. And on the, the right-hand side, you can see the increase in power to maintain the same speed. And as you can see, the older the ships get, the more hull roughness is created because of the hull degradation process. And as you can see that um, after a while, after a couple of years, the, um, the added roughness can cause a 25 to 40 percent increase in power to maintain the same speed. So it's actually an underestimated source of um, of roughness and which causes a significant fuel penalty, but also a significant uh, increase in greenhouse gas emissions. Next to that, we have the toxicity impact. So as I explained, there are toxic chemicals involved in these uh, coatings and these coatings uh, emit these toxic chemicals into the water and contaminate the environment and eventually as well uh, enter the food chain. Next to that, uh, last year's there have been a lot of research done on the microplastic pollutions of these marine coatings. And it was found that 66% uh, of these coatings are, um, are based on plastics, uh, of which 90% ends up in the oceans and waterways. And it's found that it's an underestimated source of microplastic pollutions in our oceans and uh, waterways. And as you can see on the right hand side, you can see how much vessels that are sailing around around every day and if you can multiply these numbers from one vessel to the entire world fleet you can imagine how huge uh, this pollution is worldwide um, not only in the waters but also in the sediments of ports 
rivers, seas, and oceans. So the main current hill coating issues are the biofalling and the hill coating degradation. And with this, your vessel is not adequately protected and therefore uh, results also in uh, low performance. So a ship owner has obligation to repeatedly coat their vessel again and again after uh, a couple of years because uh, the vessel isn't protected well enough. Also, the toxicity, as I explained, causes the pollution of our waterways and oceans on a very big scale. But in order to um, come with an alternative, we have to um, realize or uh, think about what an ideal coating system should be. So in order to have an efficient hull coating te technology, you should have a coating system that guarantees a permanent protection for your vessel. It should uh, reach an optimal performance, so top speed or uh, optimal fuel consumption. It should be environmental safe because it's a big industry and we want that everything we do has zero impact or a minimized impact on our environment. And last but not least, it uh, should be cost efficient because the ship owners um, take their money very uh, serious. And when they change or apply a coating system, it should be uh, sustainable, but also cost efficient um, for the end users. So we came up uh, 20 years ago with this coating system and we developed it this, uh, 20 years ago uh, with uh, great success. So um, the coating consists of two homogeneous layers of glass flakes, uh, glass flake coating, as you can see in the left uh, figure. And uh, the coating is a hard, inert, non-toxic, ultra-smooth glass reinforced coating. So it's a very tough coating. Uh, however, because we do, do not use uh, toxic chemicals like, um, is the in, like is the case in the other coating systems, the biofalling occurs. However, because it's ultra smooth, it's very easy to clean the coating. And with routine underwater cleaning, whereby the smoothness of the coating is improved over time, you can reach optimal performance whenever you want and uh, at every time you want. And this is in combination with the coating system that lasts the life of the vessel without the need of replacement and require only minor touch-ups during routine dry docking. So you have a combination of a very hard coating with the possibility to clean this coating without damaging the coating and with the coating that should only be applied only one time at the beginning of the life of the vessel and that ensures the lifetime protection. And that uh, we can uh, we can show you uh, with uh, several case studies. So uh, it's classified as an uh, abrasion resistant ice coating. There is no corrosion, corrosion activity taking place. So that means that there are also no um, uh, cathodic protection. So anodes required to, um, to stop this uh, corrosion because with this coating, you can seal off the entire um, underlaying uh, material, for example, steel. So there's no corrosion activity. Uh, you have to apply the coating only once. Even for ice going vessels, we have seen that uh, after a one time application, the vessel is protected for the rest of its life. And with that, we see also that uh, vessels are extending the life uh, because uh, the protection of these coatings are far better compared to the current coatings in use. And therefore, ship owners uh, can enjoy their vessel uh, way longer than uh, using the traditional uh, coatings. And because you have to apply the coating only one once, uh, you uh, this results in major uh, maintenance savings. Um, so if you uh, have a one-time application, you uh, save on uh, docking time because you can uh, stay uh, shorter in a dry dock. You don't have to buy a new coating every couple of years and you don't need to pay the application costs. So all those things end up in um, quite significant maintenance savings, which is also very important for ship owners and uh, shipping companies. Next to that, I explained at the beginning that it's very important to have a good biofilling control. And with this coating, with this smooth coating, you can easily clean uh, the biofilling 
and remove this biofouling from your hill. And depending on the type of vessel you own, uh, there are uh, several methods to uh, clean your uh, underwater hull. On the one hand side, there are underwater cleaning equipment available. So depending on the size of the vessel, you can uh, clean your uh, underwater hull with the uh, different equipments uh, that are available. And for larger ships, it's uh, recommended to work with professional divers. For smaller ships, you can uh, have your own crew do it if you are uh, if you are uh, able to afford your own uh, yacht, of course. Uh, and uh, you can also do it yourself by using making use of the smaller equipment that is available. It's also possible to lift your uh, vessel, especially the smaller vessels, in a lift and high pressure jet the falling um, of your ship. And in this way, uh, you're able to um, remove your bio falling whenever uh, you want and whenever it's also necessary because in the graph below you can see the difference between a conventional coating which increases in roughness over time and therefore also increases in additional fuel consumption compared with the eco speed coating you can see that if you have a routine um, cleaning procedure so after a couple of months if you clean your vessel you can see that you can control your biofouling rate on your ship's hull and the more you clean, the faster you go back to the reference point of um, uh, additional fuel consumption of 0%. And you can even go below that because the more you clean, the more or the smoother the coating gets. So instead of a degradating coating over time, we get a coating that's got smoother and smoother over time. Next to that, it's a completely non-toxic uh, coating system. So there are no biocides involved. There are no heavy metals involved. And because it's inert and stays on the coating um, the entire lifetime of the vessel, there are also no microplastic pollutions taking place. So we can say, and based on uh, research we did with uh, external research uh, institutes, that there are no emissions in the water because of this uh, non-toxic coating system. So to finalize, I want to show you uh, two case studies. The first one is a research vessel, the Laura Bassi. Uh, we coated this uh, research vessel 12 years ago. And after 12 years sailing in ice, there was no need for the owner to replace the coating. Normally, if you sail with an uh, other coating system in ice, the, the owner should replace the coating already after one year. So even after 12 years, the owner um, was very impressed so to see that the egg speed coating is in excellent condition after, even after so many years of service. We have performed only touch-ups in the bow area affected by impacts with the ice layer. So you can see because of the ice in the left picture that um, the touch-ups were necessary in uh, specific areas. But after carrying out these touch-ups, your vessel is good to go and it, um, it saves a lot of money in dry dock, a lot of time in dry dock, but you'll also have more operational days because um, you can carry out the dry dockings way faster compared uh, to, the, to the traditional method of applying a whole new coating every type dry dock docking session. Another example is the Patriot. So the um, owner of the vessel um, said after 10 years of trading on the same routes, the Patriots eco speed coating is still going strong. We know that after an underwater clean, the oil consumption goes down to what it was when the paint was new. So the owner says that after each cleaning session, the fuel consumption goes back to an original coating. And that's very special for coating systems because with the current coating systems in use, the coating degrades over time. Uh, which, as we have seen in the, the first slides, uh, brings a huge fuel pe penalty, but also increases the greenhouse gas emissions of your vessel. So that was the presentation, and I hope that you uh, enjoyed um, the information and that you find it interesting, and also are now able to uh, think more about selecting a right coating system, and that you now understand the impact that the coating system can ha have on your uh, maintenance cost, but also on your fuel consumption and, of course, also your greenhouse gas emissions. 
Uh, and that was a presentation. And um, if there are questions, feel free uh, to ask. Thank you very much, Martijn. And uh, I got a very impressive, very impressive. Um, I mean, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. I mean, if it's such a wonderful coating, um, sort of what's the catch? <laughs> is it... Uh, is it maybe uh, the, the pricing? Is it very costly? Is it something else? Um, so yeah, the price is of course a bit higher because it's more quality coating. Yep. Um, it's also because the coating lasts the life of the vessel compared uh, with uh, coatings that should be applied after three to five years. Um, it is indeed a bit more expensive, but uh, concerning the savings you make on maintenance and on fuel consumption, Fuel it's, alone, it's just uh, neglectable. Yeah, because it, I, I read in the let's see, maybe maybe you can tell something about the fuel pen, penalty because I've read something about how much money you can save on that. But do you have that on top of your head? Uh, how much you can save with? Uh... Yeah, in terms of money, I mean, not only fuel. Yeah, it, it depends, of course, a lot on the type of vessel you own and uh, the sailing days, the sailing hours, uh, the conditions where you're sailing. So in the maritime industry, it's uh, very difficult to uh, say, okay, for this vessel, you're going to save up to uh, that much because yeah. it depends on a lot of factors. But we have a lot of case studies and um, we uh, researched a lot of um, literature. So we, we know what we can expect. And we also have a calculator where we can estimate how much your vessel is going to save. And, yeah. um, and of course, it depends on the, the price of the, of the fuel nowadays, um, yeah. how much the savings uh, are. But most of the time, the, the, the cost for fuel is extremely high for uh, shipping companies. So if you can save around 10 to 25 uh, percent, then you were talking about a lot, a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I found it while scrolling through the book. Uh, you provide the example of a hundred ton, no, let's see, a cargo ship that requires a hundred tons of fuel per day to maintain a cruising speed of 20 knots, taking fuel at $700 a ton. That's uh, roughly MGO, but I think the price is a little bit higher. The extra fuel required to just keep going at the same speed would cost $10,500 per day or more. So they compared it to an entire fleet or the, the operator would pay, um, let's see, two, $315,000 more. Well, I mean, you can do the math. It's just $10,000 a day. That's, uh, that's quite a lot of money. You can do some nice things with that money. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cool. In the meantime, uh, Stefan uh, or anybody else listening, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. You can either interrupt us or you can uh, ask them in the chat box. I had a, I had quite a few here. Hey, Stefan. It was quite impressive, uh, Mark, Mark Martin. To, to, to be honest, that you can achieve such a savings with uh, with just a coating. Yeah. Do you know the division between the fixed cost and the variable cost? Um, because what is the cleaning time, for example? How many square meters can you, can you clean per minute or per hour? Because I think that is the big game change, right? If you can reduce that even more, uh, then the win is even bigger. Yeah, so uh, we have cleaning equipment that can uh, clean up to 1,500 square meters per hour. So 1,500 square meters per hour. Wow. Um, so we own a vessel ourselves. It's 22 meters long. And we clean it in um, in about four hours. So of course, it's a trade-off be between uh, the cleaning expensive and the fuel savings. Yep. But we see in uh, every every in every case that if you clean your vessel, you have a major fuel savings, and that's uh, that is just um, way more compared to the cost you uh, have to uh, um, the cost for uh, for cleaning. And so that's the sort of the trade-off because I can imagine ship owners saying, well, I don't want to be dependent on the cleaner or whatever, but in the end, it's all a matter of money, time. How long does it take to clean? Is it, is it how, how quickly are you operational, etc.? cetera? Yeah. That is something you can help with. You can help the ship owners to calculate. 
Yeah, exactly. So indeed, it's a trade-off between the cleaning costs and the fuel savings you have. And of course, also the maintenance costs for not reapplying a coating every couple of years. Yeah. So it's actually a big um, uh, business uh, case what you have. And depending on the type of ship, we can indeed uh, see whether it is interesting or not. Um, but as I explained uh, before, the fuel cost of a ship is is uh, is uh, huge. So if you yeah. can save 10 or 20 percent, it's uh, become quite interesting uh, from from in the first years already. Yeah. What is also nice, I guess, is that you don't need a specific cleaner, right? You just need an offshore diver uh, yeah. and you're able to do the trick, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So with the right equipment and of course you need to know how to clean the vessel, but that's relatively easy to learn. Then you are able to clean the vessel or you can do it yourself if you own your own uh, yacht, for example, or a uh, pleasure uh, craft, then you yeah. can uh, do it yourself as well. So that's uh, that's exciting. So, so thinking outside of the box, um, because I read that the ice breaking classes, they don't really require the, the cleaning because the, the ice itself cleans the hole. Yeah, exactly. Can you make artificial icebergs in ports or something like a street or, well, it's not really a street, but like a lane where vessels can just sail through in order to get scraped clean? Is that something you already maybe thought about or have? I've thought about it, but uh, I've not uh, <laughs> calculated uh, the cost and uh, did the engineering. Ah. So uh, that's a neat idea. There are a lot of uh, different methods to clean the ship. Um, this is just the smaller uh, approach, but you can also work with industrialized uh, cleaning systems. But uh, right. of course, the market needs to be ready and um, it also takes time and investments to develop such, uh, such systems. But of course, yeah. we're uh, thinking about optimizing the cleaning uh, aspect. Uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, of course, key in the whole proposition to uh, to have that optimized. Yeah. Um, so maybe this is also the, uh, I wouldn't say the final question, but the obvious question. Um, if it is so good, how come that it's so hard to get this point across in the industry? So why is not everybody doing this if it saves you so much money? maintenance everything i mean ship owners are all about the costs if you can save a lot of costs then why don't we do this so it's a it's a difficult question because there are a lot of uh, different aspects um, to this industry in one place you have um, other uh, coating systems that hmm. have their uh, people who are working uh, as well and uh, want to sell their uh, coating and are well known in the industry on the other hand, it's of course the cleaning aspect that is uh, sometimes a bottleneck for some ship owners because yeah, um, yeah, they're yeah. also uh, very traditional in the way that they have um, always coated their ship with an end falling or a fall release coating. And yeah. uh, they just want to bridge the five years to the next dry docking. And what happens between the two dry dockings, it doesn't matter for them because they always pay the price of extra fuel or the, the emissions and um, because they accepted that cost they never looked how to optimize um, their coating system and whether they can uh, save money on the fuel consumption but yeah. also on the maintenance cost so it's there are different sides on the story uh, but yeah, of course the cleaning is also for some uh, owners um, yeah the bottleneck to uh, dive or to um, to hire a diving company to uh, clean their vessels. I can imagine. So, so are there any specific vessel classes that are more suitable to your coding that are um, more easily cleaned or more operational in, in places where they can be cleaned? I can imagine uh, ocean liners or uh, offshore working vessels that maybe they decide not to do these kinds of coating because they're never somewhere around a cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it depends on the vessel indeed. So, for example, if you have a yacht, it's very interesting because um, the yacht owner uh, uses the yacht most of the time only a couple of weeks per year. So, um, yeah. for a yacht owner, you can say before he arrives to his vessel, he can make sure that his underwater hull is cleaned. And mm -hmm. when he uses his vessel, he can sail with top speed or lower fuel consumption. So for yachts, it's very interesting. 
but also for example for cruise ships who sail a lot and actually all the time and staying idle in the port for only a couple of days you can um, you can arrange that the vessel is cleaned at every stop and before it leaves you can uh, clean a part of the underwater uh, vessel yeah. so for every uh, type of ship uh, there are different um, interesting aspects um, to this coating system and I think it's also good uh, for clients to get advice at uh, such industries on how we um, how we do that and uh, our expertise with different types of vessels and how we can propose the best uh, solution for that uh, company. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And would you also say that that the benefit is bigger uh, if you're sailing in the more tropical areas than in the colder areas? I can imagine if you are sailing in the in the icebergs, example, then you are cleaning your your vessel itself. So that's a big advantage. But if you're just sailing around the North Sea, for example, compared to uh, the Asia Pacific, what is the difference there in benefits? So uh, when you have tropical waters, there's more uh, biofalling present. So your uh, the accumulation of biofalling will go much faster than in polar waters. So over there, you have to clean faster or clean more regularly. Um, so again, that's uh, that's a calculation that uh, needs to be made depending on the on the type of vessel and the, the operational hours, operational days of the vessel. So um, I would say that it's uh, in both cases very interesting, but uh, the frequency of the cleanings is depending also on the area where the vessel seals. And so what, what about something else than vessels? I mean, subsea industries, how about uh, subsea equipment that otherwise you can never reach? I know there's a bit, uh, I mean, corrosion and other things are a big issue for subsea equipment, especially if it's on the seabed for, let's say, 10, 20 or 40 years. That's also something that you apply, can apply the coating to, I can imagine. Yeah, we're working on that a lot, actually. So ah. uh, sp specific the areas of a vessel that are vulnerable for uh, corrosion and cavitation, like ah. uh, thrusters and rudders, um, thruster tunnels. So all those specific areas um, we coat with our uh, Eco Shield is the name of the product. And we've mm -hmm. now coded over a um, thousand um, areas just like that for major shipping companies like CMA and uh, the nails and uh, NYK. Um, so we're quite uh, familiar with that uh, in those specific areas uh, because the coating stays and protects those areas way better compared to the traditional coatings. Yeah. Um, and also for offshore vessels, um, it's quite interesting because you have a way longer protection compared to the conventional uh, coating systems. Yeah. So okay. indeed there are a lot of areas in the market where we can use the protection uh, part of the coatings. Um, but against the end falling pollution, we created this combination of the hard coating in combination with the cleanings to actually have a viable cost effective uh, alternative for the end falling pollution that is going on right now in every second um, uh, in the shipping industry. So, yeah, cool. Looking at the time, Stefan, do you have any questions left? And the last question about um, how do you apply the coating? Because do you have to apply uh, some layers on top of each other with just one layer and then it's, then it's fixed? Um, how does that compare to a normal coating, for example? So with the normal coating, you have different layers. So you have a uh, primer that's most of the time an epoxy coating. Then you have anti-corrosive layer. Uh, so you have several layers after each other and on top you have the anti-falling uh, layer or a fall release uh, layer so that's quite difficult because you have um, most of the time uh, four to seven different layers on top of each other with the speed coating you have to grid blast the entire hull uh, and that's uh, that should be done to have an um, optimal adhesion with your hull and to increase the roughness of your hull and on top, on top of that, you can apply uh, two layers of the eco speed coating. Um, and the adhesion is uh, way better also because you have a homogeneous layer. Uh, so they are the same material and therefore they stick to each other way better com uh, compared to the conventional coatings because they have um, all different tension differences between the different layers.
and therefore the adhesion of these traditional coatings are not optimal and therefore actually accelerates the degradation process as well. So that we also solved by just applying uh, two, um, um, two homogeneous coating layers above each other. Wow. Many thanks, Martijn. Uh, I think we'll wrap it up. And uh, of course, if people have any questions, they can always come to you, I'm assuming. Yeah, of course. Always welcome. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll talk to each other soon. Yes. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.